Hi everyone and welcome to this week's edition of CMC Markets. I am Ms. Schneider, Chief Strategist for MarketGage.com and today is the end of the trading session, May 21st. I'm starting off with a chart of the SPX 500, but we're going to look at NVIDIA because why not? The whole world's looking at NVIDIA, as you know, reports tomorrow, and I think it's got the entire U.S. economy on its back, uh, especially since if you look around the board, which I won't show you, but just tell you, sectors like transportation are really weak. A lot of the freight stocks and the trucking stocks weak retail weak not every area but a lot of the areas so with the strength in the economy coming from ai one has to wonder how long that can last if it's not trickling down to the consumer and how goods are moving but nonetheless here we are new all-time highs new all-time high close and also on very very little volume in fact i read that this was the uh, lowest volume that we've had in, um, I don't know, seven years in the SPY, if that's true. So essentially, what would, I don't think anything is going to happen tomorrow much because it'll all be in anticipation of waiting for NVIDIA. But nonetheless, just some key areas for you to keep in your mind. I would think that under 5250 things get a little bit dicier that's still $70 from here but that would be the number I'd keep in mind 5250 and of course on the upside you've got guys like your Donnie talking about 6000 in the spy who knows 5400 i've seen targets there but to me what makes most the difference is like i said if this starts to roll over and it breaks down under that 5250 then perhaps we've got a different ball game meanwhile while the whole world talks nvidia here is a chart of copper which yesterday made a new all-time high and today actually what you can see here is an inside day so with all the talk of shortages of copper and considering AI, copper is an essential raw material and this is partly why inflation is not going away anytime soon. So just in terms of some numbers to look at, when you have an inside day, really what you want to look is the low of the day of the outside day, so that would be 497 and the high of the inside day, which would be 516.24. So 497 to 516, there's your range. We get out over the top, then I don't see any reason why this shouldn't continue on up, especially since it's been a very orderly rally, but we break down under the bottom, then most likely we'll see some kind of correction, possibly to 480, possibly even lower to more like 465. Also interesting is this doji day. So that means essentially that the traders have paused here and interestingly paused right at the top of the closing levels that we saw yesterday. And not only has NVIDIA taken all the thunder of everything, including what I just so shown copper, but the dollar yen all of a sudden has been very quiet about it. But nonetheless, we had talked about 156 being pivotal in that the dollar starts to gain strength against the yen back over 156 to somewhat of a concern. So let's keep that 156 in mind. If this 156 holds up, obviously we're looking back up at around 157.95 to 158. 159, we just pierced there very, very briefly. People are saying 160 would be the place where the Bank of Japan might make some level of intervention. And of course, on the other side of the coin, if it breaks down back under 156, which it did, and we got even below that 154, which we thought would be some support, that would bring us back down to 154, 153. And if we ever get below all this consolidation, which really was between 152 and 151, then of course we have a completely different ball game altogether. Next up here is crude oil, West Texas. This is the cash market in an actual distribution phase, not bearish phase, because in a bearish phase, you have to have the 50 underneath the 200. In this case, it's still above. And yet here's that $78 
level of support. I've heard talk of once this breaks under 77, then we have a head and shoulders top. I would leave that all and ignore it. We did have a little bit of news today with the U.S. releasing about 1 million barrels of gas, mainly ahead of a long weekend here we have in the States and concerns from a political standpoint that gas is too high, which it kind of is. But nonetheless, didn't really do that much to break the range. So I think for the short term, you want 78 as your low support breaks down. Yeah, looks like it could hit down to 77, maybe even 75. That was the level we spoke about last week. But I'm actually starting to think that so many bears out there, I don't really see that much of the fundamentals change other than the fact that we know U.S. has a lot of oil. And that would tell me that a back above this 200-day moving average, particularly on a closing basis, at 80.18, it would get interesting. Above 81, even more interesting. And of course, if for some reason it got back above this 82, then that would tell you that this thing is ready to fly again, and that would change the narrative on inflation has cooled. Okay, next up, we're going to look at natural gas now. Uh, those of you who have been listening to the videos every week know that we were very bullish once it broke out of this base and cleared the 50-day moving average. Once it got through 2, then 210. We talked about the importance of 240 basically because of the 200-day moving average, which now puts us in an accumulation phase. And now <clears throat> we're getting a little bit of movement with a little bit of a correction today. Not a big deal at this point. Would only become a big deal if it breaks down under 240. Now, why was this high significant? If we go just back a little bit when we started to see the major sell-off back in early January, you can see that the last high up here was at 275. And today's high was just a little bit lower than that at 271.50. So basically over 271.50, I think we can even make that lower. We can say at the opening today's range, which matches the close of yesterday, or up at around 266 above, I would think we might see more upside below, of course, then probably would mean that we have to at least test this area of support here at 250, and then we'll see what happens at 240. So silver looks even prettier than copper does, and at $32 an ounce, uh, clearly we talked about the fact that once it broke 30, it was going to keep going, and here it is. And so now we have to say, what are some of our more immediate levels? I think 3150 would be one place to look for, should hold. If not, maybe we go back to retest that 30. If that holds 3150, then what we must do now is go back in time to see the last time silver traded up at $40 an ounce, which many think is a target. At this rate, though, anything goes. The idea, of course, is that it's very bullish and remains extremely bullish at this point in time. Okay, with gold right now, it's consolidating over $2,400 an ounce. Um, obviously, also on, well, in this case, not like silver. Silver is not on new all-time highs, but gold is. And the silver-gold ratio, by the way, continues to favor silver, which is why that looks so much more bullish. But nonetheless, we cannot underestimate the fact that as long as this holds 2400 to 2390 it does look like it can go higher. Interestingly, this was not a full inside day today since we broke the low of yesterday by a smidge. But certainly, we are close in the range here to watch. So let's kind of say above 24.25, bias continues to be bullish below 24.20, and we can really use that level of a strict or I should say narrow range. Then maybe we have to go back down to around these 2400 levels. Very quick peek here at sugar futures since we talked about it last week. Only last week, it's continued to do its descent as opposed to following through the upside. But nonetheless, extremely interested. If you looked at a momentum chart on this, you would see a mean reversion with a new low that we had at the start of the week. So, or actually the end of last week, and followed by an inside day. So right now, I have in my notes that if this takes out the high of this day right here, which according to my notes is at 8 tash, it's 1899, so let's call it 19. Then it would be a reason to believe that this might be at least some kind of temporary bottom. So let's end with a quick look at NVIDIA. 
and what we can see here of course is if we just go back even to March pretty much except for this little dip down here sideways consolidation we are outperforming the benchmark the SPY notice the real motion here though is under the 50 so we're seeing a bearish divergence of course that could be temporary but essentially we're looking at the high of the whole move was at 974 closing today at 953 under 885 which is the 50 day moving average I think you might see some selling coming in and clearly with predictions of 1000 1050 even as high as 1200 the next thing to be watching for would be is this a candidate for a stock split okay i hope that helps thanks so much for watching i'll see you all again next week and if you have any questions please feel free to send them along